So tell us what the uh, most difficult part of getting back into Kylo Ren would be. What element of his personality is the toughest to tap into? The costume, I would probably say. And where do we find Kylo Ren when the film opens? We find him right after where he left him off in Force Awakens. There's, not, there's, no, there's no kind of time gap. I don't think there's been a lot of time to process anything uh, yet. Uh, is uh, what is it like having to work with the mask? You get to you work with the mask, and you don't work with the mask. Is it challenging? I, I mean, yeah, it's challenging. That like sometimes you can't see, but uh, it's really. I think it's like it's a beautiful mask. I re I like it both wearing it and not wearing it. You know, you know, I don't know what. It's hard to it's hard to say. Uh, the theme of it of people who are hiding. You know. Um, behind masks, I remember for the original one wasn't like it was part of the Star Wars world that we didn't want to take for granted that you know people just wear masks for no reason. So we tried to, um, at least even for myself, no try to figure out why he was hiding or why he why he needed it. And what's the relationship between you and General Hux in this film, Kylo? Well, kind of similar to where uh, they are in the Force Awakens, where it seems more. Maybe it's, you know, uh, competitive, you know. Um, I'd say that's the best way to answer that. And uh, the physical preparation for this film, mm. more intense, same? Similar in some ways and different in others. It's like the, um, the first one, I feel like the vocabulary of uh, the... A fighting style that we were kind of going with was we were coming at totally fresh. We're because we started this kind of almost a month after we finished the Force Awakens. There, the, that kind of vocabulary was still in our bodies more, so it made things easier and a little bit a little bit faster. But the the rigor of doing it was maybe more intense for this one. So uh, Mark Hamill was in Force Awakens a little bit in this film, a big part of the story. Yeah. How was that working with a you know? With Mark, it's hard to say without saying that I we, if I actually did, but um, I will say that as far as like uh, being around him, he is a very, uh, you know, charismatic, generous person who is not closed off at all. It could very easily be I've kind of done this before, and, and I I know how it goes, so I'm just gonna kind of, but he, you know, as you kind of hope, people like. Uh, him are in that position couldn't be more generous couldn't be more um uh, available to kind of talk about it it's he's like he's an amazing guy i think and so uh force awakens uh you were part of the new newbies the new cast uh now we have new newer cast yeah. members how was uh how was the balance between the legacy cast and the your cast from last film and then the new cast Great. There's no hierarchy on set, and that comes from leadership down, which starts with Ryan and all and Kathy. And there's no, uh, there's no like we uh, we we've been this before. We know what we're doing because none nobody does. No, even the, I, I even if you ask Mark probably about it, I'm sure he would say the same answer that he, he's done. Um, four of them now before, but I, th I think he probably still approaches it with not knowing what's going to happen. And I think everyone realizes that and, and doesn't want to do themselves or anyone else a disservice by telling them what their experience is going to be, n nor did the original cast do that to us because it's, it's very personal to every person. Everyone responds to a different the movie of this scale, you know. Um, so you, uh, it's, it's very generous atmosphere. And Mark did say the same thing pretty much because I've already asked him that question. Did he? Oh, yeah, he was very, like, uh, I, I get the, my pages just like everybody else gets my pages. So, right, right. So you're dead on there. Uh, the practical sets for this were su uh, supposedly real impressive and massive and yeah. more detailed than we've ever seen in any other Star Wars film. Uh, can you tell us what it was like working with that and if you had a favorite set? Um, no, I didn't have a favorite set. But I, I will say that this time I had more time to enjoy the sets. Well, I think with the first one, it was more terror or, or denying that 
you know, oh, there, look, there's a Millennium Falcon. You're like, oh, okay, uh, put it out of your mind and just focus on the story. Uh, but this one, because I had a better sense of what the world was, I think I had more time on set to sit back and enjoy how the, the scale of them. And the audience, when they, uh, this is my final question, when the uh, audience sees the film and is experiencing it, what do you think they're going to walk out from, take, what do they take away? Again, I think that's a very personal uh, thing. I, it, what is great about this movie is that it's able to balance so many different stories that are not still just plot devices or you know two-dimensional. Everyone is a three-dimensional person, I think. Um, and it doesn't sacrifice that Ryan just knows what I, uh, what you kind of hope directors know who are working on uh, this movies this size that no one will care about any kind of you know explosion or ship or animal if there's no humanity behind it and if anything I think it uh, obviously it lends itself to the story and the more you vested are in the people the stakes are obviously higher so hopefully people will take that away from it but it's impossible for me to say what a general kind of um, thing someone will zero in on probably for some people it's all about porgs some people it'll be all about you know luke you know it's hard it's hard for me to say what people will will pull from it but uh if anything it'll hopefully feel as real as possible